Hey fitness fam, have you ever wondered if you're sabotaging your gains by hitting the gym too soon after your last workout? That's right, when is the perfect time to dive back into another sweat session to maximize those muscle and strength gains? It's commonly believed that muscles need about 48 to 72 hours to recover after a workout. But how true is this for the way most of us train? Does sticking to this recovery window really make a difference? Or could we be back at it sooner without compromising our progress? This becomes even more intriguing when we consider how different training variables and lifestyle factors outside the gym can influence recovery times. To really unpack this, imagine two groups of gym goers. One group hits their workouts with that standard 48 to 72 hour break, while the other group is pumping iron every 24 hours. Comparing the muscle and strength gains between these two groups can reveal some eye-opening insights. A couple of studies have tackled this very question, so let's dive into what they found and discuss what this means for your training routine. Stick around because you might just discover the golden key to optimizing your recovery time for peak performance and gains. First up, a study from 2018 conducted in Singapore. They recruited 30 active guys and split them into two groups. One group trained with just 24 hours of rest between sessions, and the other took a more traditional approach with 48 to 72 hours of rest. They kept this up three times a week for a whopping 12 weeks. Both groups had similar diets throughout the study. Now this is the interesting part. Both groups increased their strength in exercises where they did 10 rep maxes pretty much equally. And when it came to gaining lean mass, same deal, both groups saw comparable gains. This really throws a wrench in the idea that you absolutely need to chill for 48 to 72 hours before hitting the same muscle group again. Now, on to the second study from 2016 out of Portugal. This time, 21 trained men were split into the same two rest interval groups, 24 hours and 48 to 72 hours. They followed a three days per week training program for seven weeks. Interestingly enough, neither group saw significant increases in fat-free mass, which might suggest that the method used to measure muscle hypertrophy wasn't sensitive enough. Despite this, the strength gains in exercises like the bench press and leg press were pretty much on par for both groups. In a surprising twist, the gains slightly favored the 24-hour rest group, though not by a statistically significant margin. This could suggest that individual genetic differences might play a role in recovery and gains. So, what does this mean for us? Well, it suggests that the traditional rule of thumb to wait 48 to 72 hours isn't set in stone. Depending on your body and your training intensity, you might not need to wait that long to hit the gym again for similar muscle and strength benefits. That's definitely something to think about next time you're planning your workouts. All right, let's dive into the science of training frequency and debunk some myths along the way. The big question on every gym goer's mind is often about how often we should train each muscle group. Do we really need to wait 48 to 72 hours between workouts for the same muscle group? The intriguing part here is that numerous studies are showing that you might not need to wait that long. For instance, there's evidence that training with just 24 hours of rest between sessions can lead to similar adaptations as the traditional longer breaks. This is huge because it gives you flexibility to design your workout schedule without worrying about those strict recovery windows. Now for those who love hitting the gym frequently, you'll be excited to hear this. Training a muscle group five or more days per week is actually feasible and can be incredibly effective for building muscle and strength. Let's talk about a 2019 study that really puts this into perspective. In this study, they recruited trained men who perform the same exercises and the same number of total sets per week. However, they split them into two groups. One did a bro split where each muscle was trained once or twice per week, and the other group did a full body routine where each muscle was hit five times per week. After 10 weeks, the results were fascinating. The strength gains in exercises like back squats, bench press, and rows were pretty much the same between both groups. However, when it came to muscle growth, particularly in muscles like the triceps, elbow flexors, and the vastus lateralis, part of your thigh, the full body group saw better hypertrophy. So what's the takeaway here? It turns out the frequency of training can be much higher than traditionally recommended without compromising your gains. In fact, for some, it might even be the key to superior results. This opens up a lot of possibilities for how we can structure our workouts, especially if you're someone who loves to train often and wants to maximize every session at the gym. This is also why we see more people doing push and pull routines as these cover every muscle group more often if done correctly. All right, let's tackle a hot topic that's really important for anyone serious about fitness, fatigue and recovery. It might seem like common sense to wait until our muscles are fully recovered before hitting them hard again in the gym, right? But what if I told you that occasionally training your muscles when they're still a bit tired could actually be okay? Here's the scoop. Training under some level of fatigue doesn't necessarily kill your gains or worsen your recovery. In fact, we've got some data suggesting that muscles don't need to be 100% recovered to continue benefiting from your workouts. In those studies, 
we discussed earlier, the group training every 24 hours were definitely pushing their limits by working out three consecutive days, likely starting each session with some fatigue. Initially, you might think this sounds intense, but it turns out their recovery wasn't hindered at all. Now let's clear up something about extreme fatigue. I'm not talking about those days where you can barely lift your arms or feel like you're moving through mud. That's not the goal. Extreme fatigue, where you can hardly contract the muscle, probably won't help you much. But training with a manageable level of fatigue, that can be part of a smart strategy. Here's where it gets really interesting, the repeated bout effect. This is like a superpower your muscles have. Over time, your muscles adapt to the training demands you place on them, making them recover faster. It's an incredible and somewhat underappreciated phenomenon. For the folks in the 24-hour rest group, there's a good chance they were actually recovering faster between sessions as the weeks went on thanks to this effect. But keep this in mind, while we're focusing on muscle recovery, we shouldn't forget about our connective tissues like tendons and ligaments. These structures can also suffer from overuse and might not recover as quickly as muscle. High frequency training might mean quicker sessions with potentially less strain per session, but we still need to be mindful about the overall load we're placing on these tissues. Ultimately, everybody is different. Some of you might find that squeezing in more frequent sessions works wonders, while others might discover they need more downtime. Experimenting with your training frequency and paying attention to how your body responds is key. And remember, sometimes taking a step back with deload periods is what your body needs to fully repair and come back stronger. All right, let's wrap up everything we've talked about with a quick summary that'll give you the lowdown on training frequencies and recovery times. So you might have heard that waiting 48 to 72 hours before training the same muscle group again is the way to go. But guess what? We've got a bunch of data showing that reducing that rest period to just 24 hours doesn't mess up your muscle or strength gains. That's right. High frequency training where you're hitting the gym and targeting the same muscles more often can still be super effective for both muscle hypertrophy and strength gains. Now, I'm not saying you should ditch the 48 to 72 hour rest period. It's totally cool if that's working for you, but it's also okay to train more frequently. The key takeaway here is that your recovery isn't just about the clock ticking down. It's influenced by how you train, what else is going on in your life, and how your body adapts to stress. Speaking of adaptation, your body is pretty amazing at adjusting to what you throw at it. It can ramp up its recovery processes thanks to something called adaptations. And even if you're training when slightly fatigued, fatigued, that doesn't necessarily mean you're sabotaging your gains. The science shows that even if muscles aren't fully recovered, this doesn't necessarily worsen your recovery overall. So what's the bottom line? It's perfectly feasible to put together a training schedule with shorter rest periods like 24 hours between sessions. Under the right conditions, your body can handle it and you can still see awesome results. Well, that's it for today's video. If you picked up some new insights, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more awesome content. Thanks for hanging out with me and remember, stay flexing, stay glowing, and I'll catch you in the next one.